go up, you know, pulled off the side of the road and waited for him to pull in behind me, but fortunately he went out around. So I made it okay. <laughs> but it did remind me of uh, a little cute joke, or at least I thought it was. It's about uh, this little old lady, probably about my, my age, was speeding down the street. And the police pulled in line and put the red light on her, went up to the side of the car, and he said, Lady, you realize you're speeding? It's 20 miles an hour over the speed limit. It's only 20 miles an hour here, and you're going 40. And she says, Well, young man, you have to realize that a lady at my age has to get there in a hurry, or I forget where I'm going. <laughs> Well, it's been said that those who make history seldom know it, and those who witness it seldom see it. And I believe that the black settlers who come to my area would have been very surprised that we are interested in studying. And I become interested in this history when I was uh, this is ancient history now. When I was a senior in White City High School in 1942, I was a quarterback on the White City football team. We went to play at Dunlap. We were out on the field warming up, and the Dunlap team came running out on the field. Now, I'm a country kid that went to town on Saturday night, you know, and didn't get far from home and wasn't too worldly wise, but on that Dunlap team, I noticed this black kid on their team and you know it kind of raised the question to me well what's he doing down here at Dunlap I mean Dunlap to me was 90 miles from nowhere well fast forward now about 30 years I'm married graduate from K-State degree in history business and a minor in history and my wife and I joined the Morse County Historical Society so I went to the first meeting and the president says, well, what committee are we going to put you on? <laughs> I said, well, I, I can't come down here to too many committee meetings, but then I told him the story I just told you about the black football player. And he said, you know, he says, I've wondered about that. Why don't you study that and a month or two come back and tell us all about it? Well, hmm. Little did I realize what I was getting into. I certainly wasn't planning on writing a book, but I did. It wasn't just one black football player at Dunlap, and it wasn't just about Dunlap. It was about the Call Indian Reservation. I'll show you a scale of it here in a minute. And it was about uh, the history of Kansas. It was about the Civil War. All the states of the South were involved in this. Uh, Reconstruction, the Ku Klux Klan, White Knight, Jim Crow, and a whole bunch of other things involved the Reconstruction following the Civil War. So, it's a big story and it's, uh, it expands. So what I'm going to try to do to make sense to everyone is to kind of first give you a summary of it and then I'm going to get into some slides. But there were hundreds, thousands of blacks came to Kansas following the Civil War. There was, uh, they were getting out of there because of these Jim Crow laws. You see right after the Civil War, the Confederates were disenfranchised. They lost their vote just like the blacks lost their vote. They didn't have a vote. But the blacks, as a result of Emancipation Proclamation, received the vote. The Confederates lost the vote and they were taxed heavily and many of them lost their farms and ranches. Well, I believe it was 1873, the federal troops, which was there to enforce freedom of the blacks, Federal troops were withdrawn from the South. That's when this mayhem took place because whites formed the Ku Klux Klan and white diggers and set up Jim Crow laws and established all these segregation rules and regulations about 
swimming pools and water fountains and which side of the street you live on and all that. So that's really what this is all about. And uh, I've got about a dozen slides here. I mean, can you hear me? Are you hearing me okay in the back? Do you want the lights off too? Uh, I think it would help. Okay. Take me just a second to get this paraphernalia set up. So I won't be standing in front of you. Well, mostly because I only have 49 minutes left. Maybe not. I didn't start out thinking that I was going to end up with a book entitled Back to Black Settlers on the Car Indian Reservation, but that's what it, that was the central point of the book as far as the local area was concerned. Now, uh, the Carl Indian Reservation was down by, by Council Grove. Council Grove, was, I'll show you a map in just a minute, but it was a central location for Council Grove. The trading post was just south of Council Grove. It was 20 miles by 20 miles. And these people, these black settlers, come up there because of a man that I'd never heard of when I started this research and neither did anyone else down around Morris County. In fact, this whole history was almost lost because nobody down there knew really anything about it, except for two black people who I interviewed, and I'll show you some photos of those in just a minute. This man's name is Benjamin Singleton. He's the one that brought thousands of black people to, to Kansas. He was an honest man, and he was working tirelessly for his people. He was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and he died in Topeka, destitute. He's buried in an unmarked grave. Can you see that in the back? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, how did he advertise to his people? He was uh, from Nashville, Tennessee. He passed out these brochures along the plantations, the railroads, the, the, the river docks, the churches. And he says it's they're leaving the 15th of April, 1878. Now, he'd had people here before that. But this boat was leaving from Nashville, Front Street, April 15, 1878. Now, I haven't verified, and there's no way that I know I can, but I believe this is the first group of families that come to Dunland. They left there in 1878, and I know that a MK3 train load of blacks came to Dunlap the following month. 275 black families. They came because land was available on the Kaw Indian reservations. You know, we'd given the Indians land as long as the grass shall grow and the water flow, but we decided we needed that land. So we were gonna sell it, and they did. 
But that's why they were coming up here, because the Indians were leaving. They left in 1873. They didn't get the land sold for four or five years after that. But anyway, uh, that's why they came here. This is one brochure. There is one here, this specific Q Dunlap, and I'll, it's kind of interesting, or I think it is. I don't know if you probably can't read that, but I'll read it for you. Ho oh, for sunny Kansas, dear friends and fellow citizens, I have just returned from the Singleton settlement in Morris County, Kansas, where I left my people on the uh, finest, one of the finest countries for a poor man in the world. I am prepared to answer in all questions that may be asked. The Singleton Settlement is near Dunlap, Morris County, a new town started on the MKT. Your surrounding country is rolling prairie, plenty of stone, water, and wood on the stream, plenty of uh, coal within 25 miles. <coughs> I have this to say to all. Now is the time to come to Kansas. Land is cheap, but going very fast. But there is plenty for all at the present. He distributed these brochures all over the South. And people responded by the thousands. In fact, it got to be what eventually would be called the Exodus. This is a rough drawing of the Caw Indian Reservation. It touched into four counties, Wabansi on the, on, on the north, Morris right here, with Council Grove here, Dunlap here, Ryan County here, Chase County here, and Emporia is right down in this area. <coughs> In 1873, this, you know, we gave them the Indians, we gave this to the Indians, they already owned it, but we gave it to them, and then we took it back, and we run them out completely, we run them out completely, and we moved them to uh, Oklahoma in 1876, which made that land available for settlers. Now, I, sh I showed you a picture of Benjamin Singleton. The interesting part about this is, <clears throat> I wondered, why, how did he know about this? Well, I, I found out. Uh, and the way I found it out is, I put my book on the internet after a while. Somebody said, well, it ought to be out there. So I put it out there, <clears throat> and it was, Kind of surprising the number of people who were interested. <coughs> now I got I got orders on Amazon.com from California to, to Washington D.C. from uh, Minnesota to Texas, and by golly, I even got some orders from Blue Rapids, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. This is a photo of one of the, the first black settler in Morris County on the Carl Indian Reservation. His name was Charles Harness, and his wife's name was Jenny Singleton Harness. Oh. Action. Yeah. Nobody knew it. But the family got a hold of me and said, dude, know anything about this and of course I didn't know much about it. I knew he was the first black settler out there but I didn't know his wife's name was Jenny Singleton. Mm -hmm. Well you know a lot of this I can't prove that we believe the family and I believe that Jenny Singleton was a half sister of Benjamin Singleton that she's the one they lived there among the Indians about six years. Mm -hmm. They knew 
cause or leave it. So she communicated, we think, with, communicated with her brother because he made several trips up here. But anyway, I give her credit, I give her credit for a big share of what, what's happened down here at the call in that reservation. <clears throat> this is their home. It was built at the southwest corner of the reservation, about 10 miles southwest of Council Grove. They built it along, a, just right near a big spring. I still run it about 100 gallon a minute, right, right outside the front door of this place. And it's the southwest corner of the Kaw Indian Reservation, right on the Kaw Honey Trail to go to western Kansas. So if they could talk to us, they'd have an interesting history to tell us. This is what's left of their home, and sorry to say, their current owners don't want anybody in. I've been there before, years ago, but now they don't really want anybody in there. I don't know whether they're taking stones away or what, but it's hard to get to it today. <clears throat> now, uh, these people left the South and could take one carry-on, what we call today a carry-on, they had a blanket wrapped with their possessions, on the boat for five dollars, take you to Wyandotte in Kansas City. So they didn't have very much, although Ben Singleton said that these people that I'm going to take and this first 275 that he brought here had money. They could buy the land, they could build a cave or a lean-to or a log home or a stone home. And most of them got along real well. But I found this, not this exact one, I typed this up, of course. But this is a list of settlers who were in trouble financially and needed some help. Now there's an interesting aspect of this if you study it real well. I think we've all heard the term 40 acres and a mule. That was a, a rumor that fled across the south among the blacks that if you could come up here the government would give you 40 acres and a mule. Now, of course, it didn't transpire.